Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be going into interfaces. Uh, and by that, I don't mean user interface, I mean coding interfaces. Um, they are kind of like abstract classes, if you don't know what they already are. So I'll give a quick rundown of what they are before we make them. Um, first of all, this uh, page is quite useful, uh, this Microsoft page, because the reason why interface is useful is because, so wait, before reading that, I'll explain it. So. Let's say I'll open up the voice movement thing from the last video. If you you don't need to have this, this isn't related to the tutorial. It's just in the project. So okay, this is our class here, and obviously it's a public class. That's all you need to know. Uh, it's called voice movement, so that's just just what the class is, and then it derives from mono behavior. Now let's say we had another class and we wanted it to derive from here. Say we wanted our other class to have all this stuff already in it. We didn't want to copy and paste. We just wanted all this stuff. We would write um, whatever the name of our other class is there. And then instead of mono behavior, we would write voice movement. So we can have it derived from voice movement. Now we're not, it won't work. I don't think you can derive from yourself. Um, but the point is, if we derive from this, we would then have access to all this stuff. It would already be here because it's, if you derive from another class, think of it like this. So if you have a class for um, a student, for example, you've got all the data on a student. Then let's say you have another kind of student that's different. It has all the same stuff as a student, but some extra things or slightly modified workings in the class, then you would put it in there. So for example, in my game, you'll have a base class for maybe, um, I don't know, an item. And then maybe you have different kinds of items that derive from item so that um, they still have all the functionality of an item, but they are a bit different. So that's why you would derive. It just saves you a lot of copy and pasting and it adds, it just makes the whole object oriented programming makes it more sense. Um, and it's very useful. Now, the thing is, let's say we have an enemy and that takes damage and does something. And then let's say we have a, um, I don't know, a barrel or a box or a, I don't know. What do you have in games that you can hit and just do, like destroy? Let's say Zelda, you have phases, vases, whatever, um, smashing pots. Y you have different things that when you hit them, deal, like take damage, but they do it in different ways. So for example, enemies will take damage, their health bar uh, will, you know, update and then they might get knocked back and so on. Whereas like you might hit, um, a pot in Zelda or something and it'll just smash. It doesn't have a health. It just, just smashes when it gets hit. So what an interface is, is you can, as well as mono behavior, you can import an interface. If I do I, these are interfaces here. These are um, like I, this, I, that formatable. Um, and if you import an interface and then it says, uh, we need this, um, method inside of it. So interfaces have methods that you have to have. So for example here, I mean, we're not actually going to use this, but this is an interface, so we're going to make one of them. So this is I formatable. I just means interface. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's the standard way to write them so that you just know off the bat that that is an interface. It's I formatable. And that just means you put this on stuff that is formatable. Now, I personally have never used this. I don't know what it's for. Um, it takes in string format, you know, format provider. I have never used it and I'm not going to use it, but we're going to write our own. Um, uses I've uh, had of this, and if you've been watching my inventory tutorials, you'll have used this, is we'll use um, unity engine dot event systems. And that means we can have uh, like I draggable, for example, a drag handler, which is, it's already got its own code on it that uh, gets called and it uses this function. And it means that anything that derives from it has to have this function on. Now you can have this functionality with like deriving from a class. The problem is, let's say we have uh, the base enemy class and different enemies that derive from that. We don't want to have like that all deriving from damageable because we're going to have different things that completely like they're not related at all in our game. Like, as I said, enemies and things that you can smash and things that you can hit, they're all going to be completely different and work in different ways, but they're all going to get hit and take damage in some way. So what you can do is you can write one call like I damageable or I hittable or something, and you can um, make that and then put it here. And then, um, that means that we'll put a function in here so that whenever we attack with our weapon, instead of doing like get component, uh, voice movement, or, you know, normally you'd have enemy health or enemy, you can just get, um, I hittable or I damageable. And then, um, you can do the function on it, which will be like, you know, deal damage or take damage or, um, attack. You would use the function and that would work for anything. But the best thing about it is in these functions that it makes us right in here in these methods, um, that it'll add, we can write the custom code that um, decides how this particular thing takes damage, because obviously different things take in different ways. Now, if, now if you look at this, it'll make more sense. So rather than just um, inheriting from class classes um, like normal, 
um, the benefit is that you can't actually derive from month, um, like for example, when we have mono behavior, we can't also derive from another class like voice movement. It says we will, but you know, we won't be able to. Um, see, it cannot have multiple base classes. That's the problem. You can't have multiple class, uh, base classes. That's what you use interfaces for, as it says on the page. You can't, so it doesn't support uh, multiple inheritances of a class. So you want to, you must use an interface if you want to um, use more, basically. So we're going to make our own. So let's say we're going to ignore the voice movement. You don't need that. So we just want a cube with um, no code on it. And then let's make another object. Let's make a sphere and just move it to uh, minus two. Why not? Um, oh, not minus 18. Okay, that's fine. I don't really care about the camera, to be honest. So we've got these two objects, and we're going to not have them parented. Um, we want them to both take damage, but take damage in a different way. So that maybe one of them, um, I don't know, when it takes damage, it does something different. We'll, we'll think about that. But let's make the interface first. We want to create a new C Sharp script, and we'll call it I damageable. And for the class, we don't need to import any um, Unity classes or anything because it's not necessary. Um, it's not deriving from mono behavior. It doesn't have these methods. And it's also not a public class, it's a public interface. There we go, it goes the nice like greeny, yellowy color. Um, and now we're just gonna write in here, we need to give it a method. So that basically means that anything that derives from I damageable needs to have this method in it. So we can write um, void, and then um, we'll say, so if we're going to write get component damageable dot deal damage, um, so, and we're going to have it take in, what should it take in? It should take in um, float for the amount of damage, and it'll take in maybe uh, a damage type, though we should probably make that actually. We're going to make an enum quickly. Um, create new C sharp class script, sorry, um, damage type. So damage type is a public enum um, damage type. And that has, um, what should it have? Um, fire, um, water, uh, uh, I mean, to be honest, um, you could go with this um, as long as you want physical. So let's say we go back to here. We want um, damage type dot. Oh, we want a damage type called damage type. There we go. Um, and as you see, as you go over these, it uh, tells you actually. It's like fire is zero, water is one. Um, you can override those, but they are the default values. And to be honest, you don't really reference the values rarely, um, like ever you just reference the actual type. So let's say when we deal damage, we're gonna pass in how much and the damage type, there we go. So now let's close these two, close that, we don't need that. So we'll quickly make a script on the cube called, we'll call it like cube health, I don't know. I'll also make um, spear health. That wasn't typing. Um, So we've got two scripts, sphere health and cube health. So let them compile. All right, so we'll just give it a uh, public health, whoops, public um, float health. We'll just do that for the other one as well. Um, so first of all, we want them to interact slightly differently. So we're gonna get them first of all to implement i damageable and as you see it's going to go red underline saying we don't have that method so we have to uh, implement the interface and here we go it takes in the damage and damage type and now we can actually use that so we could say when we want to deal damage we'll say um so originally you would say you know health minus equals damage but maybe you would want to actually uh modify the damage so we could just make a simple, I mean, we're not going to use this fully, but we'll just make a switch. So we'll say um, switch damage type. 
and we'll say the case that it's um, if it's physical in the case that it's physical damage we'll say health minus equals damage multiplied by uh, 1.4 f or something um, break and we'll just we can't, I'm not going to bother doing it for all of them but let's just say you know if it's um, air if it's earth, if it's um, fire, and we'll say if it's air, it takes 1.1. Now, in reality, if you're actually doing this, you would have a, um, you would have some way of predefining like how much damage you take from each type. You wouldn't have a switch inside the enemy. This is just a quick way of doing it. So um, that will work. Now, let's say we want um, the sphere to actually take damage as well. So it's I damageable. But then maybe you also, maybe you want it to do something completely different when it takes damage. Maybe you don't care about the damage type. Maybe spheres just take damage anyway, okay? Maybe spheres just take the raw damage. So health minus equals damage. Um, or maybe spheres might just uh, get destroyed. Let's Fine, let's do that. That'll be a better way. So destroy game object. So they both have the same function, even though they're different classes. They... Uh, both derive from mono behavior and the they have the interface which means that when this thing takes damage regardless of the damage or damage type it's going to be destroyed whereas this will take damage depending on what type it is and then if, if it's none of these types then it won't take damage at all now really you wouldn't have that um now i'm going to quickly explain again the benefit to this is that you don't want on the projectile or sword or whatever on the hitbox you don't want that to store what you do to each different type of enemy you don't want to say uh, if the thing we hit is this, do this. If the thing we hit is this, do this. If the thing we hit is this, do this. You want to store that on the enemy that you're hit. All the sword cares about is hitting, and if it can be hit, do the thing. The sword doesn't care what it what it's hitting. It just wants to do the hit. If you get what I'm saying. So it's called abstraction, and it's almost the same as having an abstract class. You don't. What one good practice thing about coding in this sense is you don't want to store information on something that it isn't specific to that thing if you get what I mean. So this enemy does, it's specific, it needs to know, you know, what it takes to what damage. The thing hitting it doesn't care, it just says, I'm going to deal this damage and it's this type. You can take care of how much damage to take in this sense. So let's just show this in action. So we're going to have to actually make something else to deal the damage, to be honest. So let's just make, um, let's just make an empty object. Um, I always like having it at the origin just because, and we'll just say uh, damage things. <laughs> This is the stupidest name of a class I've made, but who cares about naming classes as well, right? No, no, really, you should make them uh, have sensible names, but this is just a quick test. So we'll have um, public, um, yeah, we'll have public game object. Um, hmm, how should we have it? No, we'll just store a public cube health um, cube, and we'll have a uh, public sphere health sphere. And we'll just say um, void update um, if input dot uh, mouse button down zero um, cube dot deal damage. Now, um, well, yeah, like so, cube dot deal damage. Now, this was what for yeah. Sorry, this probably wasn't the uh, best way to actually show it because, well, as you see, the cube has that method, but that would be this case anyway. So I guess one good way of doing it is um, saying, what should we do? I've got an idea. This is a better way of saying it. So, so the problem I'm having here in this example, it's going to work anyway, but I'm saying they're still specifically different things. But from this point of view, we don't want to, we don't care about what we're hitting. We just want to hit things. So let's have a public list of game objects. So, right, this is probably a better way of ex uh, showing an example. So, um, um, objects uh, equals a new list of type game object. Okay, so that's all we care about. We've got a list of objects. It's size of two. So we want to say if input dot get um, get mouse button down zero. When we press the uh, left mouse button, we want to pick a random thing from that list. So obviously there's only two things right now. We want to pick a random one. So we'll say um, uh, how about objects oops, 
objects and then for the actual index we'll just say random dot range and that's an integer isn't it float it'll, it'll still uh, be an integer I think if we put an integer yeah it takes well it needs to be an integer so it'll work it's fine random dot range um, objects dot length dot count um, is it inclusive? Let me just check, sorry. Um, oh, what's it already saying? It takes one argument. Oh, sorry. Um, returns a random integer between minimum inclusive and max exclusive so that that works because even though it's between zero and two and we want it between zero and one it doesn't include the two it goes to zero to one uh dot get component now we can actually get component i damageable okay and then dot uh deal damage now it takes in um two parameters it takes in a amount so we'll say this thing deals 10 damage and it deals earth damage for example now let's just make sure we actually did earth there yeah okay so when we left the press left mouse button, left mouse button, sorry, we get something random from our objects list, and we're going to get the component damageable on it and deal the damage, right? We here we don't care at all what object it is, what it is. We're just going to get its component. Now normally you'd want to get its component and then check if it's not null, but we know for now it's not null. Um, so we just say, hey, pick pick this object, get its damageable thing and deal damage. We we're dealing 10 damage and type earth. We, we don't care if it actually is going to take 10 damage. We're going to deal 10 damage. Maybe it has resistance. Maybe it takes more damage to earth. Um, maybe it doesn't even care about the damage or earth because this one doesn't. It's just going to get destroyed. So let's have a go. Show you how this works. So we need uh, two objects here. So let's just put a sphere cube. Let me, let me just drag them in. I'm being an idiot. I would have to lock it if I wanted to drag it in like that. So sphere and cube, right? Um, and we could just run that, but let's actually give them some health. So um, 100 and sphere is 100 too. So they're both on 100 health. They're both different objects. They have different ways of handling damage. So let's click. All right. Now I feel like I just clicked and the cube took 18 damage. I'll click again. The sphere's gone. Now it's uh, having problems. When I, when I click, it's picking one or the other. Now when it finds the cube, it's fine. But when it gets the sphere, it's saying, hey, it doesn't exist anymore because um, the sphere is being destroyed. So that's fine. Obviously, that's to be expected. But as you see, it um, handles it differently. They both have the same method. It's very easy when we deal... Oh, I'm in the wrong project right now, um, which is fine. Here we go. Um, we literally don't store anything about what we're hitting here. We just say, hey, if this thing we're hitting is damageable, deal damage to it. And this can be used in other cases. So you could say... Um, that the, okay, obviously, this is a bit of a weird way of explaining it. But all interfaces are like words that end in able, if you get what I mean. So something that's damageable, draggable, pushable, disable, whatever bull. Like, if it is something you can do something to, then it's a good thing for an interface in most cases. So I already knew about interfaces, but I didn't really think they're important enough to use in my game. But I've got to a point where I think there's plenty of areas where I could make the code better and just neater and just easier to manage by using interfaces. So after this video, I'm actually gonna go and change loads of it. That's why I've got it open ready. Um, so obviously, yeah, I'm gonna use the damageable um, for damage types and weaknesses and everything, but I'm also gonna use it in uh, other cases. So like um, just handling when things interact, you don't wanna store specific information on the thing that's hitting it. You wanna store the specific information on the thing that is getting hit. Um, it just makes your life a lot easier and you can use this in so many ways. So. Uh, I know this video is quite a simple one, um, but rather than it being like a long tutorial, I was just explaining, obviously, why this is good coding practice and why you should use it and how to do it. Um, I hope you actually implement these uh, things in your game because it's a uh, good practice to do. Um, yeah, so there's not much more to say. Obviously, if you haven't already, then uh, please uh, leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. Join our Discord server if you haven't already to talk more about Unity, Discord bots, whatever you're here for. Uh, but apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.